Do want to switch gears now, though. We'll get more on political efforts heading a little later on in our programming. But I do want to turn our attention to a crisis that is affecting the world. Uh, taking a look here at some video that we have, because we're going to talk about the weather, specifically how hot it's been lately. Monday was the hottest day ever recorded on Earth. The previous record, which was set on Sunday, only lasted 24 hours. And before this week, the record had stood for a year. I'd like to continue on this conversation and bring in now Andrew Dessler. He is a professor over at Texas A&M University. Andrew, thanks so much for joining us here today. So, man, two records broken in the span of one week. Uh, tell me, what exactly were those temperatures? Well, I mean, the temperatures were about 17 degrees Celsius, but, you know, what's important for your viewers to understand is that, you know, this is entirely expected. You know, we've been saying for decades that if we keep dumping greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the climate's going to keep getting warmer, and we've reached the point where we've departed the climate of the 20th century, so now every couple of years we're going to get another record. And as you mentioned, something that has been expected, but I would imagine that there's some difficulties when trying to track the average temperatures that we're going to see over the next few years. Uh, tell me, how do a scientist meteorologist come up with that average number? Right. So for about the last 150 years, um, there have been enough thermometers all over the world that we can make a, a reasonably good average measurement of the temperature of the planet. And so there's a process that the ECMWF, who are the people who the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, who put out these numbers, they use called data assimilation, where they take all of these numbers, they put it into a big computer model, and it tells you what the global average temperature is. So it's all based on thermometer measurements, but you, know, you have to process the data. Going back to these records that were set just this week, so my understanding is that Monday set the record for the hottest day ever recorded. Uh, but does that mean that temperatures could have been hotter before we started ever uh, keeping these records? Uh, what does that look like? Is that something that we're seeing a changing right now specifically with the climate crisis or something that's a little bit more normal, so to speak? Right. So, you know, if you look at the whole history of the Earth, the Earth has been both much hotter and much colder. I mean, if you go back four billion years, the surface was molten. Um, so, you know, it, it has been a lot hotter. Um, you know, it's important to understand that the long, very long time scales that people talk about, you know, the hottest temperature in 100,000 years is not really what matters. Uh, what matters to your viewers is that it's much hotter than it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, because a lot of the world around us is built for the climate of the 20th century. So if you live in a city whose sewer system was built in the 20th century, that defines what uh, kinds of rain events it can tolerate. And you know we've, we've left that. And so we're getting more intense rain events, we're getting hotter temperatures, uh, and, and you know we're not prepared for that because the the world we've built was adapted to the 20th century. All right, I think that that's a good segue to my next question because, of course, us personally as humans, we kind of feel uh, these temperatures and how they affect us, whether it's uh, we're sweating or a lot of heat-related illnesses. But speaking a little bit more on the infrastructure that you mentioned when it comes to cities and how they're built to withstand certain temperatures, is there already an outlook at how that is going to change over the next several years or decades? I mean, when is that plan supposed to be put in place? Right, so as the temperatures warm, obviously we need to rebuild the world around us for these hotter temperatures, and it is not going well. You know, in Texas, uh, we had Hurricane Ike, which almost uh, delivered a knockout blow to Texas in the late 2000s. And we've been arguing for literally 15 years about building a seawall to protect Houston. And, you know, they're just now getting around to starting to build it. And it's gonna be extremely expensive and nobody wants to pay for it. So. You know, it's it's uh, ad adapting these higher temperatures is going to be extremely difficult. And in fact, the, the cheapest way to deal with this is not to try to adapt to warmer temperatures, but to actually stop emitting greenhouse gases and stabilize the climate. And you know, we can do that by switching to renewable energy, which is now our cheapest energy sources. Let's kind of go back to temperature averages from the last several centuries. As you mentioned, 
perhaps before there were hotter days on record since we started this record keeping and there was also colder temperatures is it possible that we'll see maybe temperatures drop again is this more likely that we're going to see them get even hotter and also for example us here on the west coast we're based out of phoenix arizona so we're seeing triple digit temperatures basically every day for the last several weeks is that going to be the new normal for many cities across the country yeah, so, you know, we have a joke in, in the climate biz that this is the coolest summer for the rest of your life. Uh, it's the, and it's the hottest summer of your life, uh, of your past life. Um, so, you know, it's not going to cool off. Um, and in 10 or 20 years, you're going to look back on this, and this is going to look like an average summer. And in, you know, 40 or 50 years, this is going to be downright cool. And so, you know, I tell my students, you're going to live through this. This is not a problem for future generations. It's a problem for you guys. So yeah, don't expect cooler temperatures to come back. They're, they're never coming back. All right, well, that's scary. Uh, this entire <laughs> outlook that we've been speaking on. Uh, Andrew, we do appreciate your expertise on this. Of course, a record-breaking week when it comes to temperatures. A very serious situation looking at the climate going forward. Anything that you feel that maybe we didn't address, something that our viewers should keep in mind as we continue to register and record these record-breaking heat waves? Yeah, no, I, I don't want people to come away from this uh, feeling like we don't have any options. We do have options. So if we can switch away our energy system away from fossil fuels to renewable energy, uh, once we stop emitting greenhouse gases, the climate will stabilize, it will stop warming. It won't cool off, but it won't warm. And we can do that at basically no cost. And so you might be saying, well, why are we not doing that? It's because of the power of fossil fuels. Uh, fossil fuels are making, they're so powerful politically that they're simply not uh, going to go away quietly. And they're fighting the energy transition tooth and nail. So even though everybody, society would be far better off if we did this, uh, that, you know, they wouldn't be better off. And so they're going to fight it. So really, as I tell my students, this is not a scientific problem. It's not a technical problem. It's a political problem. So all we need is a political will to solve this. Andrew, interesting that you mentioned that because we are in an election year. So we've been kind of talking about politics every single day. And even when we try to segue to a different topic like the climate, it all seems to come back to politics somehow. Andrew Dessler, a professor over there at Texas A&M University, we appreciate your time. Talk soon. Thank you. I do want to segue 